Sports presents the best of the National Football League, the American Football Conference. Today, from Memorial Stadium, it's the San Diego Chargers versus the Baltimore Colts. Continue to fall all afternoon long, and we are set to go as Mike Wood is awaiting the referee's whistle back deep to receive for the Chargers as James Brooks. And this one's carrying out of the end zone. So the Chargers will put it in play at the 20-yard line. As you take a look at Dan Fouts, there's the backfield for the Chargers. Fouts, Capaletti, Chuck Muncy. The receivers, Charlie Joyner, Wes Chandler. What an addition to tight end Kellen Winslow. And there's a look at the offensive line. Billy Shields, Doug Wilkerson, Don Masick, Ed White, and Russ Washington. And you'll be hearing about that front line all day long. First and 10, San Diego at the 20-yard line. We're set to go. Fouts will put it up. Intended receiver Chuck Muncy. It was batted away at the line of scrimmage by Bubba Green. There's a look at the Baltimore defensive line. They play a 4-3. Donnell Thompson, Herb Orvis, Bubba Green, Mike Ozdowski. Linebackers, Shiver, Fettersfield, a new addition, Mike Woods. And the defensive backfield, Nesby Glasgow, Brazil, Bruce Laird, and Kim Anderson. Second and ten, San Diego Chargers at their own 20-yard line. West Chandler in motion to the top of your screen. Fouts give right side, Muncy. Donnell Thompson. Gene Washington working with me this afternoon. And Gene, it looks like this Baltimore Gold defensive unit is fired up today. Well, they certainly are, Phil. <laughs> Number 54, Sanders Shivers, who shot in and clogged things up on that play, hasn't been playing very much the last few weeks, but the Colts have needed some help on their defensive left side to stop the run, and it looks like he's going to do the job. Third and eight, Fouts. And the receiver is Dwight Scales. He's fumbled the football. Glasgow has recovered at the 50-yard line, and it is Baltimore's football. Bill, what happened in that situation? The Colts have decided that they wanted to put some pressure on Fouts. You'll see the middle linebacker shoot up through there on the blitz, but Fouts gets the ball away. He hits Scales right in the hands, but he can't hold on to the football. He's wide open. If he catches this football, he runs for a touchdown. There's nobody between him and the goal line. And Nancy yeah. Glasgow, the man on the spot, picks it up, number 25. First and 10, Baltimore. Play action, Burt Jones. And his intended receiver was number 80, Ray Butler, and he simply overthrew him. Take a look at the Baltimore offensive alignment today as you look at Burt Jones. He'll quarterback this unit, Curtis Dickey, Randy McMillan. Oh, what a group of running backs. Wide receivers, Roger Carr, Ray Butler. The tight end is Reese McCall. And here's a look at the offensive line. Wade Griffin, Robert Pratt, Donaldson, Huff, and Jeff Hart. Second and ten, Colts ball at the 50-yard line. No score, opening moments of this ball game. 14 minutes to play in the first quarter. Give Curtis Dickey left side. What a run by Curtis Dickey. First down at the San Diego 37-yard line, Gene. Well, Curtis Dickey utilizing a tremendous speed he has. He runs a 4.240, and you can see when he gets outside and he's getting a good block from his guard, number 62, Ken Huff, he turns that corner, and he can really turn on the speed. And he has great size to go along with that tremendous speed. Now, Curtis Dickey is fourth in the AFC in rushing with 404 yards. Boy, can he get the job done. First and 10, Burt Jones. Intended for Dickey, the ball was batted at the line of scrimmage. There's a look at the Charger defensive unit. Look at this front line. Woodcock, Gary Johnson, Louis Kelcher, and Leroy Jones. Linebackers, Woody Lowe, Bob Horn starting today in place of Cliff Thrift, Lyndon King on the left side. And the defensive backfield, Mike Williams, Allen Ellis, a new starter. Pete Shaw has moved to free safety, and Willie Buchanan has moved back to strong safety, as we talked about in the pregame. 
second and ten. Ball spotted on the 36 of San Diego. Dickey left side. This time he will not get away from Willie Buchanan or Woody Lowe. Great pursuit by the Chargers. Take a look at Mike McCormick on the sideline. He certainly has to be pleased with the way his Colts have gotten off with this start. They're in excellent field position. This is something that they haven't had very much this year is good field position. You know, interestingly enough, Gene, the Colts have trailed in five of the six ball games they've played in right out of the chute. And when you get behind early, particularly against a team like the San Diego Chargers, it is tough to play catch up. Three wide receivers now for the Baltimore Colts in motion. Butler on third and 11. And Jones will be wrapped up. Lyndon King shot through and brings him down. A punting situation for Baltimore. Well, the Colts going with their blitz this time, and they got Jones. They changed things up. They went to their man-to-man -man coverage. You can see Burst dropping back. He's trying to find Ray Butler, who comes in motion and goes downfield. But the Chargers have good coverage on, and there he is, number 57, Lyndon King, comes in and gets the sack. Now, Mike Garrett is on to punt. He's averaging over 42 yards every time he puts his foot to the ball. Had six of them go out of bounds inside the 20s. Back deep is Pete Shaw for San Diego, and he's going for the sideline, and I think he'll find it. And this one, too, I believe, will go out of bounds way inside the 20, closer to probably the 14 or 15-yard line. So the Chargers will start this drive from their own 15 with 12.05 to play in the first period. San Diego nothing, Baltimore nothing. Well, they sold 45,000 seats here at Memorial Stadium for this ball game, their best advanced season ticket sale of the year, but I believe a few people have decided to sit this one out. It is chilly, it is windy, and it is rainy in Baltimore. The Chargers with the football at the 15. Chuck Muncy, the lone running back. And Muncy will take it right up the gut. He will not get away from the grasp of Mike Ozdowski or Bubba Green. You see that big pad on Muncy's left hand. He broke his hand two weeks ago. And he's back in there already. Take a look at some other scores around the league. Look here, Cincinnati over the Steelers, 13-0 second quarter score. Houston and New England side, 7 all up at Foxborough. Second down, seven. Ball on the 18. Kellen Winslow in motion. Play action, Fouts. An out pass to number 85. That is Eric Severs, and he cannot hold on to the football. The Chargers with a two tight end formation. Bill Kellen Winslow was wide open going down the field. I'm sure he's going to come back to the huddle and say, Dan, if we get in this situation again, you can find me because I'm wide open. There you take a look at Don Coriel. Strength coach Phil Tyne. Another score, Buffalo over the New York Jets, 7-6 to six at halftime. Three wide receivers, San Diego, third and seven. Fouts, crossing pattern, and it is almost picked off. Tim Anderson had his hands on the football. The intended receiver was Dwight Scales. And again, the Chargers faced with a punting situation, Gene. Well, the Colts haven't done very well on pass defense prior to this game, but they're sure coming up with a big plays here as Dan Fouts tries to get the ball downfield, but I don't think Dan sees number 26, Kim Anderson, because he comes right in there. He almost picks this football off for an interception. Now, Dwight Scales had Larry Brazil beaten. George Roberts set to kick it away for San Diego. He's averaging over 41 yards a kick. Dave Shula, Kim Anderson back to await the kick. It's a spiral, and it's a good one. Shula will take it at the 40. And he'll gain about four yards on the return. Hank Bauer is right there, as is, yes, it is Hank Bauer. So the Baltimore Colts will have the football for the second time in this ball game. I'll be back with more first quarter action in just a moment. He's had a lot of success against number 48, Alan Ellis, who's just joined this ball club, and I'm sure that he's going to try to get Roger Carr to see how fast Allen Ellis still is. Jones, a little out pattern, and he's got Butler, and Butler will try and get out of bounds. He coughs up the football. The officials blew it dead, and they will retain the ball. Allen Ellis, the man we just spoke of, in on the stop right there. As we take a look at a few other scores around the National Football League today, some big games. Cleveland over New Orleans, 10-7, second quarter score. Philadelphia over Minnesota. That should be a great game as this one wears on. 9-7, second period. It is Green Bay over San Francisco, 3 to nothing. 
six. Here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, 10.41 to play in the first period. No score. Second and six. Burt Jones will put it up, and a flag goes down. Crossing pattern, Dickey. And the man there was number 55, Bob Horn, the middle linebacker. Phil, I think it's going to be encroachment against San Diego. Someone in the defensive line, I think, got a little anxious. I think it's Big Hands Johnson. Now we'll take a look at it again. I think you're right, Gene. It is Gary Johnson. There he is. You can see it. That's a nice shot. Tries the holy, tries the freeze, like Mother May I. I'll tell you. Doesn't quite work out. When you're 6'3 <laughs> and you're packing 252 pounds, it's tough to stop anything once you get going. <laughs> <laughs> Second down, seven. Let's listen. Offside, right defensive tackle. Second down. So that moves it now. Second down and about a yard and a half. We'll call it two yards to go. The ball now at the San Diego 48-yard line. Ray Butler comes to the bottom of your screen. Roger Carr in the slot. Give left side. It is number 32, the rookie out of Pittsburgh, Randy McMillan. And he picks up the first down at the Charger 45-yard line before Willie Buchanan comes up from his strong safety position to bring him down. If we take a look at Randy McMillan as he heads back to the huddle. He has done a terrific job since he's come to the Colts. They say that he's the first real fullback that they've had in a long time. Not only does he have the power, but he also has the speed once he gets through that line of scrimmage or goes around the outside on a sweep. He has the speed to go all the way. Roger Carr to the top of your screen. Ray Butler to the bottom on first and ten. Burt Jones to throw it. Butler. And he is chased out of bounds, but not before he gets a first down to the Charger. 29-yard line. Willie Buchanan takes him out of bounds. Well, Ray Butler, the receiver, excellent receiver who's come out of U uh, Southern California, goes down and he gets the defender caught in that dirt, and you'll see him make the slip there. The defender slips. That's Allen Ellis, number 48, who slips, and he comes up, and Butler eludes him and gets an extra few couple of yards out of that. It is first and 10. Colts the ball at the 29-yard line of San Diego. No score, 9.52 to play, first period. a good call. Gene, you wonder why the Baltimore folks here at Memorial Stadium have not covered this baseball infield yet. Well, that's a difficult thing to say. It certainly does not help your offensive people. If we take a look as Carr goes over and catches his football, but the official decides that there you can see on the replay, when he catches the ball, the first thing that really hits is his shoulder, which is out of bounds. But that dirt infield does not help your offensive people very much. Some people say it forces the defense to slip, but it also causes your offensive people, particularly your receivers, to have a lot of footing problems. Second and ten. Burt Jones is going to go for it over the middle. something to cheer about as we get that combination Burt Jones and Roger Carr Carr comes across the middle he has his man beat uses his speed makes a great reception beats uh, number 29 Mike Williams but the thing that interests me is that there was no free safety help where was the free safety well Pete Shaw is the free safety today he's used to playing the strong side and I was going to talk about that in a few minutes what possible problems that could create and we saw one of them Mike Wood tries to make it seven to nothing and he does it so the Baltimore Colts have drawn first blood for only the second time in 1981. It is 7-0 Baltimore. We'll be back in just a moment. Stone and Gene Washington as Mike Wood has set the kick it away. Mike Wood came to Baltimore just a few weeks before the season opener. He's from the San Diego Chargers. He said earlier this week he would love to beat his former teammates. Back to receive it is James Brooks. And he'll field it about five yards deep. Pete Shaw goes back there and says, sit down, Jimmy. Let's take it at the 20. It's all down to one game now between the Dodgers and the Expos for the National League flag. You'll see the battle for the championship following today's game right here on NBC, the home of great baseball. 
those first two kickoffs are any indication how fired up Mike Wood is, he is really fired up because he just boomed it. He has got probably the strongest leg in all of football. He's incredible. San Diego with the football now. 9.35 to play in the first quarter. Fouts will put it up. Flares it out near side. James Brooks. And he is hammered. Nesby Glasgow and Joe Fetterspiel combined on the stop. Well, Phil, a lot of times in a situation like this, the quarterback will drop back, look downfield. If he doesn't have anything, he'll drop the ball off. But in this situation, it was planned to go to number 21, James Brooks, all along because you had the guard, number 63, Doug Wilkerson, out there in front. Second down, a yard to go. The Chargers with three wide receivers in there, Chandler, Scales, and Joyner. Kellen Winslow in motion to the top of your screen. Give Chuck Muncie fighting for the first down, and he's got it. Mike Woods in on the stop. You should distinguish Mike Wood, the kicker, from Mike Woods, the right side linebacker. There's a big difference there. Phil, we mentioned earlier about the fact that the Colts have had some problems stopping the run. They brought in number 50, Joe Fetterspiel, where they acquired from the Saints. They put in a middle linebacker spot, and he led the team last week in tackles. Those are the kind of additions you want to make. First and ten. Play action. Bounce. Over the middle. Chandler. Larry Brazil hammers him to the ground at the midfield stripe. Wes Chandler, some of the same kind of similarities, Gene, that a guy by the name of John Jefferson had when he played for the Chargers. Kind of a, a very... They're very smooth. Both of them are very smooth, very exactly. gliding types of runners. They have excellent athletic ability. They don't have a lot of height, but they can jump. Tremendous strength in their legs, so they can go up for the football, as Chandler did on that play. Chandler only 5'11". He's in motion again. Bounce, pitch, right side. Chuck Muncie. And he picks up about four yards before Sanders Shiver comes in on the stop. So we take a look at this replay. Chuck Muncie's going around his right side, and you'll see number 54 come up again. Sanders Shiver, along with number 50, Joe Fetterspiel, to put the stop on Muncie, and this is where this club has been hurt. On their defensive left, they've given up lots of yardage on their defensive left side, and they've made some changes to try to stop that. Second and seven, quick pass, Muncie, left side. And he is hammered down, great pursuit by Larry Brazil. I'll tell you, this is a tremendous defensive secondary compared to what you and I have seen earlier this year from the Baltimore Colts, Gene. That's for sure, and they're swarming today, Phil. Everybody's getting over on the tackle. That time you had Ed Smith, Fettersfield, and Woods over on that tackle. And one of the things that the Colts are doing is that they're playing more zone defense. And when you play a double zone and your cornerbacks come up, they're already in position in case you get a little quick screen out there. So they're going to be in good position to make a tackle. The Chargers, third and seven. Three wide receivers. Muncie, the lone setback. Bounce will put it in the air. Muncie. Chuck Muncie runs it for a first down, and the man who sprung him was number 62. That is Don Masick, the center. He pulled one around the right side and cleared it out. Muncie goes for the first down at the Baltimore 38. Well, they caught the, caught the Colts that time in their zone defense, and number 37, the nickelback, Reggie Pinckney came in to make the stop, but not before Muncie was able to pick up the first down. And as you mentioned, catching that little swing pass and getting his guards out in front, and that's all he needed. When Muncie gets out in that open field with the size he has, he's going to run over some people. Bounce, double pump, Joyner. Great defensive work by Kim Anderson on Charlie Joyner. Well, well, I tell you, that was a great throw. It was a great play. A little down and out. Had the pump fake, and Fouts gets the ball up there. Charlie Joyner's going down. He's got two men around him, but he almost comes up with this football. As you can see on the replay, he gets his hands on the ball. Kim Edison comes over, but Joyner has the ball for a minute, and it gets knocked away as they hit the ground. San Diego now second and ten, the ball at the 38. Capaletti and Muncie, the running backs. Muncie will try the right side. Number 91, Bubba Green. You know, earlier this week, Bubba Green and offensive guard Robert Pratt got into a fight, Gene, and he said, we're just trying to get fired up. 
Well, he certainly fired up because no one blocked him. The guard pulled out in front. Number 63, Doug Wilkerson, pulled to lead the sweep. But Bubba Green, as soon as he pulled, came right behind him and used his excellent speed to track him down and make the tackle. So it is now third and about 11 for San Diego. Three wide receivers, Chandler, Dwight Scales, Billy Brooks, Bounce. That is unquestionably Dan Fouts' longest run of the year, maybe of his career. That's something you just don't see if you're a San Diego Charger fan. Dan Fouts with the football. Well, you take a look. You'll be able to see number 51, Ricky Jones. He comes in, top part of your screen on the blitz. Fouts doesn't have anything, and he goes right up the middle. There's no one there. Everyone is back in coverage. Has plenty of room for the first down. As number 26, Tim Anderson, comes over for the stop. First and 10, Chargers with the ball at the Baltimore 24. Colts lead this game 7 0. Muncie. And he is finally tackled by Nesby Glasgow, the 5 11 third year man out of Washington. Not before he runs for a pickup of about five, possibly six yards on the play. Had a nice block that time for number 67, the right offensive guard, Ed White, clearing away for Chuck Muncie. Boy, if you watch these Chargers offensive linemen, Ed White and Doug Wilkerson have to be two of the finest pulling guards in all of football. Not only are they big, Gene, but they are fast. They certainly are, and they, they have to be the best pair of guards in football. There's no question about that. Second and four. Little swing pass to James Brooks, and he just lost it off his fingertips. Well, that's too bad because he had two guards out there. Number 63, Doug Wilkerson, was out in front. Had he caught that football, he would have had some good running room. Are right, you take a look at the Charger Brain Trust, Don Coriel, Ernell Durden, Marv Braden. Well, the Chargers, third and four now. Baltimore sends six defensive backs in. They do not play what is commonly called the nickel defense. They bring in what they call the dime with six defensive backs. Charlie Joyner is now in for San Diego, along with West Chandler and Dwight Scales. Flags fly, got to be offside Baltimore. Kellen Winslow. And he has the ball at the four-yard line before Reggie Pinkney brings him down. That penalty is going to be against the Colts, and I'm sure the Chargers are going to decline it and take the game. Winslow almost got in for the touchdown. Fouts knew that he had a free down, so go ahead and throw the football. And if you get something good, you keep it. If you get something you don't want, then take the penalty. Well, he certainly got something good. A first down and goal to go at the Baltimore two-and-a-half-yard line as both teams make wholesale changes. There you see it. Offside penalty decline. San Diego will take the play. Capaletti and Muncy are in the ball game. Two tight ends are Pete Hollihan and Kellen Winslow. Cappy. He'll go not very far. Number 88, Herb Orvis. Brings him down. He'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Bill, when you talk about fired up football, there's nobody in the league that plays more fired up than number 88, Herb Orvis. As we take a look at this replay, he just jumps right over his man. He comes up and puts a stop on John Capaletti. Second and goal from the three. Second and goal now. Lost about a yard on the play at the three and a half yard line. Out of the eye formation now. Winslow in motion. Now comes back near side. Pitch. Muncie. And he scores. He runs right into Nesby Glasgow and knocks him on his backside. And San Diego is on the board. Bill, once Muncy got in a position where he was one-on-one -on -one with Nesby Glasgow on about the half-yard line, there was no doubt in anybody's mind that Muncy was going to score. Chuck Muncy has such great size and speed. And you take a look here. Here he goes into number 25. There's Nesby Glasgow. There's no, no decision at all. It's going to be a touchdown. Well, you've number got 6'3", 218 going against 5'11", 185. <laughs> Don't have to take many physics classes to figure out who's going to win that one. <laughs> well, Benerska will try and tie it. 
And he does it. Well, Minerska, his 26th extra point in 26 tries. So with 3.20 to go in the first period, we are tied. San Diego 7, the Colts 7. Let's see that the Colts have just brought in to try to get some help on their special teams, and it looks like he's going to help his team an awful lot with that tremendous speed. Out of the eye formation, Burt Jones will put it up, goes right over the middle, and it is picked off. Woody Lowe, the intended receiver, was Reese McCall. Woody Gene turned just a split second before the ball was there. Tremendous reaction. Well, the Chargers went into what we call a, a double man on the outside. They had the cornerbacks coming up, taking the wide receivers in a bump and run fashion. Both corners, I'm sorry, both safeties went to help the corners deep. That left number 51, Woodrow Lowe, man to man on the tight end. And whenever a quarterback sees that, he's going to try to get it to his tight end. But Woody Lowe stepped in front, made a great play, picked it off. Now the first turnover of the ball game takes place at 3.02 of the first period. We have seen a lot of motion from both teams, a lot of guys in motion, Gene. What does that do to a secondary or a defensive unit? Well, what you're trying to do with motions and lots of sets like the Cowboys do and like the Chargers certainly do is you try to get the defense to be confused. And whenever a defensive club gets confused or uncertain, then they tend to be a little more conservative and you can have more things in your arsenal when you know that they're going to play a certain way. Muncie. Running room down the far sideline. He's finally bumped out by Bubba Green. Muncie, a first down in Baltimore court cold territory. Well, Chuck Muncie, as we mentioned before, and I think you can see him grabbing his hand a little bit. He's playing with that fractured left hand. He's got both bones, I think, in that left hand are fractured, and he's playing with that plastic cast. And when you fall on it, it's going to hurt. You can see him on the sideline. I think it's hurting him some now. Dr. Paul Woodward takes a look at it. His little finger. Here's a couple of scores for you. Minnesota over Philadelphia. 21-9 to at halftime. First and 10, San Diego. The ball at the 43. Fouts will put it up. Joiner. And it'll be close to another first down. Sanders Shiver brings him down. So you take a look at number 18, Charlie Joiner. Fouts comes back and he gets a roll zone to his left. He comes back to his right side. And Joyner just sort of holds up in that open area, he catches the football, and gets up by the flag towards the first down. And I think he's going to have it. They're going to take a measurement. What a receiver he is, number 18, Charlie Joyner. Well, he's in his 13th year out of Grambling. He's only 5'11", weighs 183 pounds, but he's sixth in the AFC in receiving. Let's take a look at this measurement. And I believe they have it. Well, the Chargers with another first down, this time at the Baltimore 32-yard line. Phil, you were talking a little bit before about the motion in different sets. When you use a lot of motion in different sets, if a team, a defensive team is playing man-to-man -man defense, it's more effective than if they're playing a zone. The Colts, I think, are going to play more zone defense. Therefore, the, the motion may not have as much effect as it normally would. Charlie Joyner, another super catch. Mesby Glasgow really popped him. The officials, though, blew it dead, and I think it was a correct call. Well, as soon as the offensive man hits the ground with the football, the official usually blows the play dead. Faust gets back, and he finds Joyner over the middle. He gets the football to him, and I think you'll see that Joyner actually is on the ground before the ball pops loose. There, he's down. He's down. Now as the ball goes, the ball is dead at that point. Second and two. Ball, 24-yard line of Baltimore. James Brooks, right side. And a stutter step this time does not fool Bubba Green or Bruce Lair. Well, the Colts had some problems before, but they seem to be doing an outstanding job on shutting that run down today. So we take a look at number 40, Bruce Laird, a real veteran ball player. Just an outstanding player who gives an all-pro performance year in and year out. Excellent strong safety. Now, we talked to him in the pregame, and he said, really, it's been lack of execution and inconsistency. That has hurt the Baltimore Colts. Certainly, the offensive talent is already there. Capaletti joins Brooks in the backfield. Play action, Fouts to Holohan. He's got it, and he's down at the Colts' 10-yard line. It is Kim Anderson on the stop. It'll be first and goal, San Diego. 
Well, Faust did just a super job because he made that little play action fake and he sees his man open and he gets rid of that football as soon as possible and you can see it's not a pretty spiral but it's right on target it looked out there but it hit him right in the hands well like they say they don't measure you by how pretty you throw them just how many you get there first in goal san diego 35 seconds to play in the opening period we are tied at seven all give james brooks right side Bruce Laird held him up long enough for Sanders Shiver to come in and shove him out of bounds. Well, that's a name and number we're going to see a lot of today. Number 40, Bruce Laird. Terrific strong safety, and he got up there in a hurry. Got a lot of help from 54, Sanders Shiver, who's making his first start today in a long time. Now, this is a young Baltimore Colt ball club. There have been a lot of problems here this year. And we'll talk about those problems in the second period because we are at the end of period number one. And we'll be back with the score tied. San Diego 7, Baltimore 7. But the Baltimore cool 12-yard line as we are set to begin quarter number two. Dan Fouts trots back onto the field. Chargers throwing for an average of 295 yards a game. That's second best in the National Football League behind the Minnesota Vikings, the team that beat San Diego last Sunday. In the last seconds of that ball game in San Diego. Second down, goal to go at the 12. Bounce. Capaletti. Touchdown, San Diego. Ooh. Field number 25, John Capaletti got in the end zone. But what made this play work is look at the amount of time that Dan Fouts has to throw the football. He surveys the entire field, and no linebacker can cover a running back for that long. And that's number 52, Ed Smith, who tries to come in and make the play, but he's a little too late. But give that offensive line of the Chargers credit because Fouts sat back there, and he had all the time he wanted to find the open receiver. And it was set up by an interception by Woody Lowe. Rolf Benerska will try and make it 14-7, and it's blocked. Number 91, Bubba Green got those big mittens up on the ball. And so San Diego's lead is only six. And his 13-7 Chargers will be back to Memorial Stadium in just a moment. If you want a machine that really moves you, the 81 Cobra, Datsun 280ZX, Porsche 924, and Trans Am are the ones to beat. And here's a machine that does. Dodge Charger 2.2. Charger leaves them all behind in mileage and acceleration. Zero to 50 in 6.6 .6 seconds. Dodge Charger 2.2, under $7,300. America's driving machine. Get $300 to $1,000 cash on select new Dodge cars and trucks. See participating dealers for complete details. Now there's a place where they have their own authorized mechanics, quality parts and service, and prices you can afford. Now there's K-Care, found only at Kmart. Noisy muffler, we've got the answer, the Arrestor Plus. It's large, quiet, requires no adapters, and it's warranted for as long as you own your American-made car. Now it's sale price at just $17.97. Need a muffler? Get the Arrestor Plus. Sure quiets things down. Get K-Care, only at Kmart. The Colts battle the Browns. We take a look at this replay. That ball is being kicked out of that dirt. And you can see it coming up. And number 99, Danelle Thompson gets the block. Look at that, Bill. That's where that football that came out of. It. Looks like my golf game. 13-7 San Diego as Rolf Benerska is set to kick it away, and he boosts it to the near side. It'll be taken right at the goal line by number 31, Zachary Dixon. He advances it out to the 15-yard line before Hank Bauer hammers him down at Urban Phillips. Now you take a look at the San Diego Chargers scoring drive. Took him only three minutes to go 55 yards, seven plays, a 12-yard pass. Fouts to Capaletti. It was only John's third touchdown of the year. Set up by a Woody Low interception. So the Colts, like they have so many times here in 1981, they drop behind. Bert Jones tries to bring him back. Scrambling. And he's going to be sacked. He's down in the end zone. The official will spot it at about the one-yard line. 
the Jim reason Webb, who was in for Louis Kelcher, Kelcher out with a hamstring, brought him down. Bill, the fans, the fans are booing about that, but what happened is that Bird Jones is trying to find some place to go. His forward progress, though, was stopped right at about the one-foot yard line. He drops back to throw the ball here, and he's trying to pick on this Charger defensive secondary, but they do an outstanding job. They have everyone covered. They're in a man-to-man -man defense. No one open. Second and a bundle. Flags go down. It is Randy McMillan out to about the nine-yard line. Pete Shaw on the stop. Let's take a look at that last play again. Well, the Chargers put an awful lot of pressure on him. They back those offensive linemen up. Burt Jones has no place to go once he decides he can't throw the football. Tries to find some place to go. But then the officials rule that his forward motion was really stopped on about the one-yard line. Now we've got an injured Charger down. He's not moving very much. It is Willie Buchanan. Tenth-year man out of San Diego State University. And the call is against San Diego encroachment. It'll be second down. And we'll take a timeout while the medical staff tends to Willie Buchanan. 14-18 to play in the second quarter. We'll be back. On in Gene Washington. We are set to go with 14-18 to play here in the second quarter from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. It is second and 19. Jones will try and put it in the air. It is his tight end, Reese McCall, a first down at the San Diego 30-yard line. I should say the Baltimore 30-yard line. Well, Bert Jones had time to throw the football. He gets back, and he surveys the situation, and he finds his tight end, number 86, Reese McCall, who beats number 47, Frank Duncan, who's come in to take the place of Willie Buchanan, who went out with the injury. First and 10, Baltimore. Roger Carr, Ray Butler, the wide receivers. Butler at the bottom of your screen. Jones for Carr. He's got it. He is bumped out of bounds by Alan Ellis. Well, again, they're picking on Alan Ellis, as did Minnesota. The week before, we take a look at this defensive line. There have been some changes. Number 61, Jimmy Webb, has come in in place of Louis Kelcher. Jimmy Webb played with me out in San Francisco. He's a good player. Gary Johnson, I think, is also out. He just checked back into the ballgame. He went out. Johnson has a neck injury. And he has just gone back in. We're not sure how much Gary will play today. Another first down for the Colts. Pitch near side. Dickey. Flag goes down. And Dickey is out for a pickup of about five yards on the play. Or he is wrestled down by Mike Williams. Curtis Dickey is a kind of running back coach's dream of Jeannie. Six foot, 201 pounds. Excellent, excellent speed. We saw him in the season opener up at New England. He just had a tremendous ball game. Illegal motion, number, number 69, First first down. Well, they caught Wade Griffin, the left tackle for the Colts, trying to get a head start. But I agree with you, Phil. When you have a guy in the defensive, in the offensive backfield as fast as Dickey is, not only is he a threat running the football, but when he comes out of that backfield as a receiver, he's a tremendous threat also. First and 15, Burt Jones. Swing pass, McMillan. Great pursuit by San Diego. Woody Lowe and Ray Preston, the outside linebackers, come up and hammer him down. And I don't think he even got back to the line of scrimmage, Gene. Well, you can see on this replay, it's a planned screen, a quick screen all the way. Both guards are out in front. Number 61, Robert Pratt, and 62, Ken Huff. But as you said, number 51, Woody Lowe, comes up and makes the stop. Lowe has such great pursuit. He's all over that football field. Doesn't have a lot of height nor a lot of weight, but he's quick, and he delivers a blow when he gets there. Just an outstanding player for the last several years for the, for the Chargers. It is now second down and 16. The ball on the 34. Jones unloads across the middle. Reese McCall and a flag goes down. The number 47, Frank Duncan, is waving, saying it was offensive interference, pushing off. Let's take a listen here. 
I don't think so. They're going to discuss it. I think that Allen Ellis is going to be guilty of holding Reese McCall. McCall came across the middle, had him beat. Holding offense, 68. Holding 48. Offsetting foul. Replay the down. Now there's an unusual call for you. Holding on both teams. Well, I, play the down. I missed the offensive holding, but I sure saw number 48, Allen Ellis, hold because McCall, Reese McCall really crossed him up. He went down and gave him a nice fake and came across the middle. And Allen, in an effort to save himself, he grabbed a hold of Reese. I missed the offensive holding. Second down, 16. Ball still on the 34-yard line. On McCauley, Curtis Dickey are now the running back. McCauley loves to catch passes out of the backfield. Ray Butler cannot hold on. Wyatt Henderson running step for step with him, and the ball was right there. Just dropped it. You're exactly right, Phil. The ball was right in his hands, and Butler usually doesn't drop on these. He's really come on. Came on last year, did a good job for the Colts. He has a little delayed action. He lets Carr clear things out. There, the football's right in his hands and just drops it. He's a little frustrated with himself. You see, he turns around. Not so much mad at the defender as he is with himself. <laughs> Willie Buchanan is back in the ball game. We are glad to report. Third down and 16. Dickey, and he is brought down immediately by Lyndon King, the left side outside linebacker. Not nearly enough for the first down, and Baltimore will be faced with a fourth and nine situation. It's time to kick it away. Well, number 57, Lyndon King, did an outstanding job just keeping himself between Curtis Dickey and the goal line. In this situation, you, hit the, you get the ball to a running back over the middle. The job of the linebacker is to let him catch the football and make sure you get the tackle. Don't let him break the tackle and gain the first down. Mike Garrett is set to kick it away. Back deep to receive for San Diego is James Brooks. The up man is Pete Shaw. 11.05 to play in the second quarter. San Diego leads at 13-7. Brooks with a fair catch. He's got it. And San Diego will start from the 22-yard line. So it has been a good one here at Memorial Stadium. 11 minutes even to play before we reach halftime. San Diego 13, the Colts 7. The rain appears to be holding off. I just hope it will continue to do so. San Diego, three wide receivers. Helen Winslow, the tight end, comes wide to the bottom of your screen. Bounce wants to put it in the air again. Throws the underneath man. It is Eric Sievers, and he's got the ball and is taken out of bounds by number 54, Sanders Shiver. Interestingly enough, Gene, the Baltimore Colts are now playing a 3-4, and we'll talk about it after we tell you next Sunday. Don't forget to join host Brian Gumbel for NFL 81. All the highlight scores and late-breaking news from all the games. Then an NFL doubleheader featuring a clash between the Denver Broncos and the Buffalo Bills. And the rematch of Super Bowl VI, the, the Dolphins and the Cowboys. Check your local listings for the game in your area next Sunday on NFL 81. Second and five. Fouts. Play action draw up the middle. James Brooks. He's got three yards. James Brooks, Jerry. Ed Smith on the stop. Ed Smith moved from his middle linebacker spot today to the left outside linebackers. Does that cause problems, Gene, or is one linebacker spot just like any other? Well, I always thought they were all just alike except for a guy like Dick Butkus, but <laughs> it really does have an effect when you go from one side to another because you get so accustomed to going off, making a push off of one foot. But, Phil, you mentioned before they've gone to a 3-4, which is something they haven't done all season long. Third and two, ball at the 29. Bounce wants to put it up. He's got a man. It is James Brooks again out of the backfield, and he's got it as he was falling down, a first down at the 36-yard line. Well, San Diego is so impressive with all of the people that they're able to incorporate into their passing system. They have so many guys coming at you, it's hard to figure out who's who. Even when we were up here at the 50-yard line, Phil, it's very difficult to, to realize who's in the game, who they're going to throw the football to. Everybody's in the passing situation. Now you hit it right on the nose. Virtually everybody on the football field can catch a pass for the Chargers, and you have to be that way to play for Coriel. First and ten, bounce. And it is intended, I believe, for Charlie Joyner, and he is hit instantaneously by Nesby Glasgow. Take a look at some other scores around the league today. Cincinnati, look at this. Wow. Do you believe it? The Bengals over the Steelers, 20 to nothing in the third quarter. Pete Johnson, three-yard run. 
Kenny Anderson has hit David Verser for a 73 yard scoring pass. Second and 10. Fouts already 12 of 18. Intended receiver over the middle was his tight end, Kellen Winslow. And quite frankly, it was a horribly thrown pass. <laughs> well, I mean, let Fouts throw a bad one every now and then. He throws so many good passes, people tend to take it for granted. I was the next quarterback, and I didn't throw many good ones. So I can really appreciate it when you have a guy like number 14 throwing them for you. Yeah, but you went to a wide receiver. Fouts is still a quarterback. <laughs> I had a little more speed than Fouts had. I mean, if, if that was possible. But I tell you, it's a receiver's dream to be playing for an organization like the San Diego Chargers. Wes Chandler, Dwight Scales, and Charlie Joyner, three wide receivers on third and ten for the Chargers. Bounce all the time in the world intended for Winslow, and the jump ball is knocked away. As Winslow and number 51, Ricky Jones, go at it. And flags fall, and I believe it's going to be called against Ricky Jones. I think it's going to be against Herb Orbis. They had things pretty settled until number 88, Herb Orvis, came over. Kellen Winslow had very little to do with the altercation at all. We'll take a look at the replay. Tries to get the ball to number 80, Kellen, Kellen Wil Winslow, and you can see that Ricky Jones, look at that. Now look at what's going on, and now Herb Orvis comes over and just shoves him. That's oh, what brought the play. Oh. And you and I talked about it in the two earlier games we did with the Baltimore Colts. It is penalties and mistakes. Let's listen to the referee here. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 88, defense, first down. Now, you don't want to commit mistakes like that, and Herb Orvis knows it. That Mistakes like that, errors like that have just killed the Colts, Gene, all year long. Well, they certainly have, but... Dan Fouts will take advantage of this situation. If he can get you down, he's going to step on you. And they're going for it now. West Chandler on a post. And it is just overthrown. The man back there running step for step was Larry Brazil. Bill, as I said before, when Dan Fouts gets you down, he's going to try to step on you. And he goes for all the marbles here as he tries to get the football in the end zone to West Chandler. And Chandler has his man, number 47, Larry Brazil, beat. If that ball stays a little to the inside, it's going to be six points. And Larry Brazil has good speed, but he can't stay up with Wes Chandler, who has outstanding speed. Well, it is now second and ten. The ball spotted right on the midfield stripe. 9.24 to play here in the first half. Tyler, Charlie Joyner splits wide left. Wes Chandler is wide right. Kellen. Still on his feet. Bruce Laird had a shot at him. He could not bring him down. Sanders Shiver finally does, but not before Kellen Winslow picks up about eight yards on the play. That was a sweet move that Kellen Winslow made that time after he caught the football. As we take a look at this replay, the best way to get back at a defender is to come back and beat him. Winslow catches the football, and Laird just can't hold on, and Winslow just uses his superior athletic ability to gain another four yards out of the play. Almost looks like a matador there. <laughs> well, he's a very graceful tight end. Winslow in motion now. Pitch far side. Brooks. Running room. And little James Brooks runs it for a first down inside the Baltimore 30 yard line. Well, when you said little, he's only about 5'9, but he's a very tough runner. He runs up in there with a lot of authority for a guy his size, but give credit to the left side of that offensive line of the Chargers. Doug Wilkerson over there leading the way. And that offensive line does such a super job. But the offensive line throughout the league, they do not get credit for the outstanding job that they do. And you can't have a good football team if you don't have a good line, and that's where all the action starts. That's the point of attack, the offensive line. First and 10, Brooks tries the left side, and he's got a few. He's inside the Baltimore 25-yard line. Mike Woods brings him down. As you look at James Brooks, boy, what a great surprise he has been for San Diego. Drafted primarily as a kickoff and punt return specialist, and he's done a great job there. But he has also been effective running out of the backfield. Well, you need some speed in that backfield. Chuck Munson gives you both size and speed. 
You know, but you can't count on one guy all the time. You need someone to take up the slack, and that's what James Brooks has been able to do. Second and six. Bounce under pressure. He throws for Joyner. What a catch, Charlie Joyner. That is just an absolutely amazing reception. Number 18, Charlie Joyner, goes up, just reaches out both hands and catches the football, sort of blowing away from him. Tremendous effort. And Fouts did a great job eluding the rush to get the football away. Mike Woods almost had Dan Fouts, and the guy we spoke of, James Brooks, pushed Mike Woods about four or five yards out of the way. Tremendous block by James Brooks to make that touchdown pass to Joyner possible. Well, Vanushka comes on. We're trying to make it 20 to 7. This time, he punches it home. So San Diego, with 7 minutes 30 seconds to play in the second quarter, has gone ahead of the Baltimore Colts. 20 to 7. We'll be back in just a moment. As Ralph Vanushka puts his foot to the ball, and it is fumbled right there by Kevin Williams. He's got it now, and he's out to about the 18, 19 yard line before Pete Hollihan trips Kevin him up. On the there you take a look at the San Diego Chargers scoring drive. 11 plays, 78 yards, culminated a 23 yard scoring pass to Charlie Joyner. Fouts, listen to this. 14 of 23 already for 168 yards and we've still got seven minutes 21 seconds to play in the second quarter two touchdowns today one to Capaletti that one to Charlie Joyner first in 10 Baltimore Bert Jones right over the middle to Randy McMillan and he's out across the 30. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KCST TV, San Diego. There you take a look at the score here. It is San Diego 20, Baltimore 7. The Colts drew first blood. And since that time, Gene, it has been all Chargers. Well, they're certainly a very confident football team. And I guess they've always been that way on offense. They've made some changes on defense today. And they seem to be having an effect. For Jones, for Ray Butler. He tries to turn it back outside. But Alan Ellis was not to be fooled. He was beaten badly last week by the Minnesota Vikings, and he is playing very, very well thus far today. Well, I played against Ellis when he was with the Chicago Bears and I was with the 49ers, and he had tremendous speed and quickness. He's since had knee surgery. I think it slowed him down a little bit, but he's still a veteran ball player, has lots of experience. He's going to make the action take place in front of him. He's only been here for about a week and a half, and he can't understand the system completely yet. So he's got a little, at a little disadvantage. First and ten, Colts. Jones is going for it to Butler. And he cannot get to the football. Again, Alan Ellis was right there. And the crowd feels it should be pass interference. No way. Both players are going for the football. You're exactly right. The defensive man has as much a right to the football as the offensive man. And you can see that number 48, Alan, Alan Ellis, is looking for the football. And Ray Butler, if anything goes wrong, Butler runs into Ellis. So if there's going to be a flag, the flag has to be against number 80, Ray Butler. Oh, it is now second and 10 for the Colts. The ball spotted at the San Diego 45-yard line. The Chargers now employ the nickel backfield. The five defensive backs, Mike Williams, Wyatt Henderson, Pete Shaw, Willie Buchanan, and Alan Ellis. Chargers now with just three down linemen. Second and 10. Jones will put it in the air. He's got a man. A flag goes down. Curtis Dickey with the football, and Lyndon King brings him down. Bill, there's a flag down. The Chargers went to their double zone defense, a sort of man-to-man -man with the cornerbacks. And as I thought, it's going to be holding. I think it's against Roger Carr because they had him double-teamed on the right side. Let's take a look at this replay. You'll be able to see it on the top half of your screen. Roger Carr is going to get double coverage. And I think they're going to be guilty of holding him. There you can see it. Number 32, Wyatt Henderson. And I think what happened is that he Illegal shut them. Contact. Number 32, defense. Automatic first down. 
Bill, that's the illegal chuck rule. He chucked him when he got beyond five yards downfield, and that's illegal. That was illegal last year. A chuck is... You, once the receiver, once the offensive receiver gets beyond five yards, you cannot bump him at all. You cannot put your hands on him. So a bump or a block and a chuck all very virtually the same thing. Well, a chuck is when you put your hands on the receiver, and that's what Wyatt did that time. He put his hands on him about 10 yards downfield. It is a first down. The ball at the 40-yard line. It is Randy McMillan, and it looked like he tripped over Robert Pratt's foot. He dives forward for a couple. Woody Lowe and Bob Horn fall on top of him. So it is second and nine for Baltimore. Look at this one. Can you believe it? Cincinnati over the Steelers now, 27 to nothing in the third quarter. New England stepping it out over the Oilers, 24 to 10 up in Foxborough. The Jets over Buffalo, wow. 27 to 14. What a surprise there. Talk about a club that has really been rejuvenated. Those Jets have really come back, haven't they? Second and nine, Burt Jones. Now he's going to try and run it upfield. And he finally dives down a good move because John Woodcock was trailing him. Woody was right on him. Number 90, Woodcock. He has a lot of speed for a defensive lineman. He really gets around. John Woodcock last week in San Diego against the Minnesota Vikings sacked Kramer. He forced a fumble and recovered a fumble all on the same play. <laughs> I mean, this is a big guy, 6'3", 255. Chargers just got him about four weeks ago from the Detroit Lions in a trade. Burt Jones, 9 of 15, 126 yards, a touchdown and one interception. Third and five. Right over the middle, Curtis Dickey will be close to the first down, and I think he'll have enough for it. Billy Buchanan right on the stop, and it'll be very, very close to a first down. They'll have to measure for it. Four minutes, ten seconds to play in the first half here at Memorial Stadium. New Orleans over the Cleveland Browns. What's going on today? 17-10 in the third quarter. George Rogers, a 79-yard run in that one. Minnesota over Pittsburgh with a 29. Over Philadelphia, I'm sorry. 21 to 9. Look at that one. Kramer, a couple of touchdown passes. A 50-yarder to Sammy White, another one to Bob Brewer. A one-yard pass. In fact, Kramer has three touchdown passes. San Francisco over Green Bay, 10 to 3. We'll have all the scores for you. Some highlights at halftime. Three minutes, 57 seconds to play on the first half. It is first and 10, Baltimore at the San Diego 30. Roger Carr. And it is picked off by Mike Williams. What an interception for San Diego. Burt Jones picks himself up off the grass here. He can't believe it. Well, Burt Jones wishes he had that football back because there's no way he should have thrown it. His man was not over at any time. So San Diego will have the football. They already have the lead. We'll be back in just a moment. Now the Chargers have the football at their own 20-yard line following that interception by Mike Williams, San Diego's second interception of the day. Woody Lowe got one earlier. It led to a touchdown by the Chargers. And now with 3.48 to play, you can bet San Diego will try and put another one on the board. First man through, John Capaletti. And he breaks into the Baltimore Cold defensive secondary. Pickup of about nine yards on the play. So let's take a look at that interception. Burt Jones is going back, and he's getting pressure, and he's going to throw this football. He makes the pump fake to Carr on the inside. He throws his ball, and look, he's falling away. And there's absolutely no chance because it's double coverage over there. Look, no chance at all. Pete Shaw is there along with Mike Williams. He comes up with the interception. Second down and one. James Brooks goes for the first down, and he finally hit out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Ed Smith is there to take him out. Well, the Chargers trying to move the football and get another one on the board here. San Diego simply not content to sit back with a 20-7 lead. 3-11 to play in the first half. As you take a look at Burt Jones, boy, don't you know he'd like to have that pass back. Oh, he sure would. He knew that he put that ball up there, and as soon as he let go, I think he said, give it back to me, because as I mentioned before, he had no chance. He was out number two to one. Kellen Winslow in motion, now heads up to the top. Bounce on first and ten. Over the middle, Joyner. 
And he's got another first down. Ed Smith there combining with Larry Brazil to bring him down, but not before the Chargers have another first down at the 47. Bill, I could see that one all the way from up here in the booth because you had number 18, Charlie Joyner, working against the linebacker, number 52, Ed Smith, who's probably the least effective linebacker on the Colts against the pass. There's no way that Ed Smith is going to cover a wide receiver. Capaletti and James Brooks, the running backs, out of the eye on first and ten. Give Capaletti. And he goes for about three yards before he's out at the midfield stripe. 230, 229, 228. Unless somebody calls a timeout, that will certainly be the last play before the two-minute warning here in the first half. Phil, do you sometimes get the feeling that San Diego runs the ball just so they can rest to put it in the air? <laughs> Give Dan Fouts' arm kind of a rest. Let the receivers catch their win. Now the clock continues to tick down, 204, 203, and I'm sure we will have the two-minute warning. And we are there. That's the two-minute warning. So... They'll take a timeout, and we will, too. With two minutes to play in the first half, San Diego 20. The announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. There you take a look at Dan Fouts. 14 touchdown passes coming into this ball game. 79 touchdown passes in his career in 42 games. Bill Ferguson's also thrown for 14. Morton and Richard Todd not far behind him. And he's got two more today, so Faust is now thrown for 16 TD passes on 1981. 15 of 24, 185 yards today. Kellen Winslow reverses his field, goes back up top. Faust going for it. He's got Wes Chandler, and he cannot hold on at the Baltimore 35. That'll stop the clock with a minute 55 to play. San Diego coming in, the most potent offensive attack in all of pro football, averaging 32 yards a game, 32 points a game. Well, again, Phil, I mentioned before the importance of that offensive line. The Chargers have great people at the skill positions, but they couldn't do any of it without those guys up front. Third and seven. Dan for Chandler again. And I believe he's got it. Yes, he does. Oh, and that's going to incite some of the Baltimore Colts. Well, Dan Fouts is certainly happy about that. He laid that football in there over the linebackers. Came in perfectly. Wes Chandler catches the football, does what he's supposed to do. He gets that other foot down. It's difficult to see from this angle because some of the Colts are in the way. But I think it was close enough where the official couldn't take it away from him. Not only did he get the first down, but more importantly, he stopped the clock with a minute 49 to play. Boy, West Chandler reminds you so much of John Jefferson, just his moves out there. First and 10, ball at the 31, bounce. Near side, Joyner, and he cannot get to the football. Sanders Shiver is there to front him and did a very, very effective job. Number 54, Sanders Shivers got a little lucky that time because he didn't see the football coming. Joyner tried to come back, and he almost caught the football. We may get a shot of a replay here. You'll see that Sanders never sees the football. Joyner tries to come back over his back and catch it, but unfortunately, Shivers is just sort of running along with him, and Joyner can't come up with the catch. A minute 44 to play in the first half. Joyner goes wide to the left. West Chandler is split out wide left. There seems to be confusion. Confusion with the Chargers as Eric Seaver, a tight end, didn't quite know what was going on. He called the timeout. Bouts 16 for 27, 200 yards. We've followed boxer Johnny Bumpus through his days as an amateur in the National Golden Gloves and the Olympic Trials. Now as a young pro, Bumpus gets a title shot as he fights Willie Rodriguez for the USBA Junior Welterweight crown on NBC Sports World, Saturday, October 31st. Plus, aerial athletes test their skills in the tricky wins of the Sierra Nevadas in the National Hang Gliding Championships. That's all on NBC Sports World, October 31st. Now that is Halloween. 
Not a bad first half for number 14, Dan Fouts. You know, the last time Dan Fouts was in this stadium was when he was 11 years old. He was with his dad, Bob Fouts, then a broadcaster. And his dad was telling me before today's game, they sat in the stands at the closed end of Memorial Stadium here, and Dan Fouts is just, just starry-eyed. <laughs> Nice homecoming. James Brooks on second and ten. Left side. And he's got another first down for the Chargers near the Baltimore 20-yard line. Well, he simply outran Reggie Pinckney. Bruce Laird was there to finally bump him out. He certainly did, but Kellen Winslow made it all happen with a great crackback block. And that allowed James Brooks the room to get outside, and then he turned on his feet, and as you said, he just beat Number 37, Reggie Pickney to the corner. Minute 36 to play here in the first half from Memorial Stadium. It has been San Diego, with the exception of a few fleeting moments in the first quarter when Baltimore took a 7 to nothing lead. It is now 27. Capaletti. Doesn't find much before Bubba Green, the big defensive tackle on the right side, shuts it off. Clock continues to run, a minute 20, a minute 19, a minute 18, second and five. The Chargers knock it on the door again. Well, Phil, what they may do is throw the football into the end zone with a pass going for the touchdown, but they want to keep good field goal position. In other words, try to keep that football in the middle of the field if possible. Look at that, total points for San Diego, 193. Winslow in motion. Bouts going for James Brooks, and James simply stopped running. Well, he stopped running because Faust threw that football away. There, there was no question about what, what he was doing with the football. He knew, knew that he didn't have anything, and in this situation, you don't want to get a turnover, so just throw it in the stands. Come back and take another shot. There you take a look at Mike McCormick, and boy, has he taken some heat the last few weeks here in Baltimore. Well, Phil, both you and I have read the newspapers, and they have just been all over this organization. Coaches and players alike. Now there's a lot of finger pointing going on here, and that's usually the mark of a young ball club. Everybody pointing the finger at everybody else. Joiner in motion, third and five. James Brooks. Well, his little stutter step fooled Sanders Shiver. It did not fool the left corner, Nesby Glasgow. And he was trying to get out of bounds, could not do it. Clock continues to run, 38, 37, 36. The ball at the 12-yard line, and you have to wonder if San Diego will stop the clock or just let it tick down and kick for three. They don't, know what the hell gonna they don't appear to be any great hurry. Well, Fouts is looking to the sidelines for his instructions. Now it is fourth and two. You've got to believe they're just going to let it tick down. Get it down to about four seconds and bring on Rolf Bonerska. And why not? He's six for nine this year. His longest is 52. This is almost an automatic for Rolf. <laughs> well, they trot out onto the field, and there he is, number six, Rolf Benershka. I'm sure he's going to try to find a spot where that ground is not too dug up. Now, it is very, very difficult to kick from the dirt and again you wonder why they don't cover it over really I think they're probably the, the only facility that I can think of where they don't put in at least some sort of grass once the baseball season's over come in and just cover that dirt infield with a, a layer of sod but they never do that here and you asked me the question I really don't have the answer I don't know why they they don't do that because I think it hurts their players as much as it does the opposition I don't think there's any question about that Gene in San Diego the moment the last out is made by the San Diego Padres the ground crew is out there covering it with the uh, with the natural grass now this time Rolf will have a good spot just outside the 20 yard line officially it'll be a 31 yard attempt <laughs> And he hits a line drive. It is good. So the San Diego Chargers have added to their lead. It is now 23 to 7. He boomed that one through. I mean, he really got a shot on that one. Well, it wasn't the prettiest field goal you'll ever see, but the end result 
was just the same. 23-7, San Diego will have scores for you at halftime. As you take a look at Don Coryell, Charger coaching staff, and rightly so, has been very, very concerned about that defensive secondary. In fact, about the whole defensive team. And they are certainly playing well today, Gene. Well, they certainly are. We can see on your screen James Harris there with a baseball cap on talking to Wes Chandler. Well, they've made some changes to try to, to shore things up in that defensive back backfield area. Willie Buchanan has gone over to that strong safety spot. And, of course, we mentioned before, Alan Ellis coming from the Bears gives them added experience at the corner position. But Jack Pardee has come in and is instilling a very sophisticated defense for the Chargers, and that's something that takes time, particularly when you have young ball players. And the Chargers have three rookie defensive backs out of their seven total. Now, Rolf Benershka sends a little squibber down there. It'll be picked up by Zachary Dixon. Oh, Hank Bauer is there to bring him down, and a flag goes into the heap. Well, it's called an illegal block below the waist by Tim Sherwin, the tight end. However, it was an offensive foul. The clock ran out. So there we stand. It is halftime here in Baltimore. San Diego leads the Colts 23 to 7 with half. And he's starting at the left corner, which he should get a lot of credit for that. Coming in in a new system and going out there and starting, that takes an awful lot, particularly at the cornerback position. Now, there you take a look at Burt Jones with Greg Landry. There's the Gaylord Perry of pro football.
seven. Well, half, and he's starting at the left corner, which he should get a lot of credit for that. Coming in in a new system and going out there and starting, that takes an awful lot, particularly at the cornerback position. Well, there you take a look at Bird Jones with Greg Landry. There's the Gaylord Perry of pro football. <laughs> he got on me after the first game when I called him that. <laughs> <laughs> has tremendous knowledge of the football game though yeah that tells you something about how long he's been around the game gene you played with greg landry in detroit well, that's right he's he, since he came into the league as a rookie he's just been an outstanding football player and, and more importantly a, a great asset to the game of football as a, as a person now back deep to receive there's zachary dixon along with kevin williams ralph vanerska is set to kick it away it's a short one and it'll be Dixon at the nine. Now check that. It was Kim Anderson who takes it out to the 20-yard line. Don Coriel looks on, likes what he sees. Let's reset the lineups for you as Burt Jones goes on. Offensively for the Baltimore Colts as they start the second half. It'll be Jones, his running backs, Curtis Dickey, Randy McMillan. Wide receivers. Carr, Butler, the tight end is Reese McCall. The offensive line, there you see it. Griffin, Pratt, Donaldson, Huff, and Jeff Hart. To the bottom of your screen is Roger Carr. Ray Butler is in the slot. The give, second man, it is Dickey, and he will not fool John Woodcock. He gains about three yards on the play, maybe four. Let's take a look at this San Diego Charger defense. There's the man we just spoke of, John Woodcock. He's joined by Johnson, Kelcher, and Jones. Linebackers, Lowe, Bob Horn, and Lyndon King. And the backs, Williams, Ellis, Shaw, and Buchanan. They have played very, very well today. Chargers now employ the nickel backfield. On second and nine, Jones will put it up. Dickey, and he cannot hold it. The ball was right there. If Dickey had held on to that football, he may have run it all the way into the end zone. As you can see, the disgust on the face of head coach Mike McCormick. Burt Jones drops back, and he gets the ball right into Dickey's hands. Ray Preston challenges Dickey right on the line of scrimmage. Dickey gets by him, and you can see that he's got two steps on him. Just does not watch the football. He makes that error. He does not watch the football all the way into his hand. Now, we talked earlier about the heat that head coach Mike McCormick has taken, but there's no coach in the world that can teach you to hang on to a football that you should have caught anyway. Third down. It is McCauley out of the backfield, and it'll be close to a first down. No, they're saying it bounced. And McCauley's still running. Well, that call is going to create lots of controversy as they gather around to talk about it. Let's take a look at the replay. Jones gets the ball to McCauley, who sort of dives. To, there you can see he's diving to, to catch the football, and he's got it. He's got possession of it. Now he hits the ground. He's got the ball. It's shielded a little bit from our view, but the one official, I guess, who had a clear shot at it decided that the football popped away just before he hit the ground. So it is fourth and nine for Baltimore, and Mike Garrett will kick it away. James Brooks back deep to receive for San Diego, and it's a wobbly end-over-end -end kick. It's a short one. Brooks will have a return, but not for very long before number 66, Chris Foote, brings him down. So San Diego will have the football for the second time, first time here in the second half, and we'll be back in just a moment. 34 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Anderson already thrown two touchdown passes in that one. Capaletti, right side, dives ahead for about five yards on the play. Don't forget, immediately following our game, it's the Montreal Expos and the Los Angeles Dodgers in the fifth and deciding game. The winner of this one, We'll go against the New York Yankees Tuesday in the World Series. Oh, look at this. A page from the New Orleans Saints playbook. Bring pro football back to Baltimore. Second and six. Joiner in motion. Quick pass. Chandler, and he cannot hold on. Oh, it looks like some of the San Diego wide receivers are watching too many Baltimore Colt movies. Take a look at the San Diego 
Backfield, Fouts, Cavaletti, and Muncy. And the receivers, Joyner, Chandler, and Kellen Winslow. And there's a look at that offensive line that has done a stellar job for Dan Fouts today. Shields, Wilkerson, Masick, White, and Washington. Third and six. I was going to say, how can you forget number 70, Russ Washington? You can't forget him even if you tried. Swing fast, Muncy. And Bruce Laird will knock him down and take him out of bounds. Three yards shy of the first down. So George Roberts will come on to kick it away for San Diego. It's only the second time the Chargers have had to punt on the afternoon. So, you know, Muncy, when he is running to his left, he has a little disadvantage because he's got that cast on his hand and he doesn't want to take a blow on that, you know, if he can avoid it. So in certain situations, he's not going to be able to run with the same authority as he can in others. That's a good point because he has to carry the ball in his left hand. That's right. So on fourth and four, Roberts will kick it away. A good rush, and he got a booming punt. Oh, look at this bounce. Roberts out of bounds at the five-yard line. So the Baltimore Colts, I'll tell you, when the car is running bad, it's running real, real bad. A 42-yard punt. Baltimore has the football, and we'll be back. That home run in the eighth. The Dodgers added four more in the ninth. Very the expose. Here it is, 13.08 to play in the third quarter. Randy McMillan will try the left side, and Willie Buchanan throws him down. Well, the Colts are going to get back in this football game. They certainly have to put the football in the air. The only problem is right now they're backed up against their own end zone. And Burt Jones certainly does not want to drop back and get caught for a safety. Now we've got our first final in. Look at this one. The Jets have defeated the Buffalo Bills 33 to 14. Boy, that is a surprise, surprise, surprise. And there you look at Mike McCormick. Oh, he's got to be... Absolutely livid what he's seeing here today. Dickey in motion, takes a few steps. Jones time, throws to McMillan, and it's almost intercepted. Ray Preston was right there, and it would have given the Chargers tremendous field position. But Burt Jones wanted to go to number 27, Curtis Dickey. As we take a look at the replay, Jones is looking at Dickey all the way, but Dickey is covered very well by number 51, Woodrow Lowe. He comes back and tries to get the ball to McMillan, and he overthrows it. There you take a look at Don Coriel. Very rarely will you ever see a smile on that man's face. He comes from the Tom Landry school of game day coaching. <laughs> he looks like he's behind by 20. He always does, even on Wednesdays. Third and a bunch. Jones has no choice. Got to put it up. As we take a look as Burt Jones goes to the sidelines, he gets lots of criticism, but you can see when he drops back, you have to give some credit to the Chargers' coverage, but look at that. He's getting pressure from every place, and he's finally caught by number 76, Keith Ferguson, but Jones doesn't have the time to throw the football, and no quarterback can drop back there and look good if this offensive line is not giving him time to throw the football. That's the third sack for San Diego. Mike Garrett is set to kick it away, and he'll only have about 10 yards to do it. And he gets a good one. It's a boomer. James Brooks backs up at his own 48-yard line, and he'll take it upfield. A great return by James Brooks as Hank Bauer just leveled somebody, and it was Mike Garrett he took out of the play. Garrett with a 50-yard kick, a 19-yard return for James Brooks, averaging 16 yards. He really brings the ball back for San Diego. Number nine, Mike Garrett, is coming off the field, but he sure will feel that one for a long time because he caught the shoulder pads and helmet right in the stomach and got knocked back about five yards. I'll tell you, you don't want to get hit by the howitzer. Hank Bauer, number 37. 
Chargers excellent field position the ball at the 31 yard line play action Fouts will put it up Kellen Winslow and he's got it out of bounds at the Baltimore three yard line Phil Winslow was in a man to man situation with the strong safety Bruce Laird and Laird is a good strong safety but it takes the best cornerback to even try to come close to covering Winslow the Colts, I was watching their linebackers. They started off, they wanted to blitz, and they came back out. It appears as though their defense is totally confused. It's like Bruce Laird said in the pregame, Gene. It seems like on every single play, somebody is breaking down on the defensive secondary squad. Malone set back now. The two setbacks, John Capaletti and Chuck Muncie. Three tight ends for San Diego. It is Muncie, left side. Number 63, Doug Wilkerson, using that great speed he has. He got out in front of Muncie. If we take a look at this replay. You'll see number 63. There he is. A good block by 25, John Capaletti. Watch this block. Look at that. Muncie just slides on through. Nesby Glasgow trying to get up in there. Ed Smith coming up trying to make the tackle. But you can see Chuck Muncie gives a signal to the fans. Touchdown. Now watch where this ball is spotted right at the front side of the pitcher's mound. It is down. And Rolf gets a good connection there. So San Diego has gotten on the board here in the third quarter with 11.25 to play. The Chargers 30, the Colts 7. Zachary Dixon at the goal line. And he's going to take it out. mistake after mistake and you can see on the replay he's just not sure whether he should take the football out or not because the official may rule that he stepped out and that the ball's going to be dead on about the six inch line so he really did the only thing he could do in that case you got to run it out because he caught that football on about the six, six inch line and you can see he's trying to explain to the coach what happened now it is first and ten now for the Baltimore Colts Curtis Dickey out near the 20-yard line. Mike Williams and Pete Shaw bring him down. The rule on that play is, though, even though he fielded it out about the six-inch line, his momentum carried him back. Watch it. It'll carry him into the end zone. Touchback. It would have been a first and 10 at the 20-yard line. However, Zachary Dixon, Gene, was just not sure of the rule. And maybe he didn't get his call. I think he was listening for a call from, from uh, number 26, Kim Anderson, who evidently didn't tell him to come out or stay in. Absolutely. McMillan! And he stumbles on that dirt in the infield. He runs it out for a first down. Let's take a look at a couple of other scores. Another final end. Cincinnati has buried the Pittsburgh Steelers 34-7. to That now a final. And at Foxborough, the Patriots have beat the Houston Oilers 38-10. to It appears as if the Patriots might be oiling the gears up there at Foxborough. Dickey and McMillan, the running backs. Play action. Jones will put it in the air. Got a man. Roger Carr. Reception by Roger Carr. A first down for the Colts now at the San Diego 40-yard line. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KCST-TV, San Diego. There you see Roger Carr going out of the ball game. A gimpy left ankle. 30 to 7. San Diego leads this one. First and 10, Baltimore. McMillan, right side. Not much running room, possibly a yard. Phil, I think if we take a look at Roger Carr on the sideline, they're trying to get him so that he can get back in the ball game. He appears to be in pain, and I think what may have happened is that. One of the San Diego guys may have stepped on his ankle. But in any event, Phil, I think what the Colts are trying to do is they're trying to get something established. They're not worried about trying to catch up right now as much as they are trying to get a touchdown so they can regain some confidence in their offense. It is second down, eight yards to go. 
Ray Butler split to the top of your screen. Give Dickey. And again, the San Diego Chargers lateral pursuit has been excellent today. Woodcock and Leroy Jones combine on the stop. Well, they continue to do a good job. And don't forget number 61, Jimmy Webb, is filling in in the middle for Louis Kelcher. And I played with Jimmy Webb in San Francisco. He did an outstanding job there for several years. Has lots of height, good size, and has good agility. Third and six. It is third and six for Baltimore. They have only converted about 32% of their third down situations coming into today's game, so they are not particularly effective on third down situations. Jones, he's got a man, and he's got it. He's out of bounds. It is Randy Burke. The man who backs up Ray Butler, and he's brought down by Wyatt Henderson. A big first down for Baltimore. Well, Burke Jones throw the, throws the football on the move, but as you can see on this replay, if Burke throws that ball a little lower and Burke doesn't have to jump for it, he may have a touchdown here. But in any event, he goes up and he catches that football at its highest point and comes down with the reception. Randy Burke, the fourth-year man out of Kentucky, First and ten, Baltimore. Wide left is Roger Carr. Ray Butler is to the top of your screen. It is McMillan, and he hammers across the left side, breaks a tackle, and is inside the San Randy Diego McMillan 10. The carry, tackled by Ray, Ray Preston, Preston and Keith ten. Ferguson combined to bring him down. And if you look at the rookie out of Pittsburgh, San Francisco has beaten the Green Bay Packers 13-3, that has to make one wide receiver sitting beside me. Number 18, Gene Washington, a very happy man. Well, they continue to share the lead in first place. Something that no one Second thought San Francisco four. would be at this point. No one thought they'd be tied for first place. Second and five. The ball just inside the 10. Curtis Dickey. Running room, right side. He gets by Allen Ellis. He cannot get by Pete Shaw. You just got an example of the tremendous speed that number 27 Curtis Dickey has. He was trying to run the football off tackle to the right side. As we take a look on this replay, he's going to try to go off tackle, but there's nothing there. And he uses that outstanding speed to bounce outside. Phil, these Colts are a much more fired up team now on offense. Now Curtis Dickey coming into this game fourth in the AFC in rushing. He is a spectacular running back, as is Randy McMillan. And remember those guys' names. McMillan tries the left side. This time he'll get nothing. Pete Shaw again comes up from his free safety spot. And this is absolutely a sensational day for these Charger defensive secondary folks. Pete Shaw, this is the first game he has played free safety. Well, he's, he's always been a hitter, and you'll see him come up in the middle as he puts the stop on number 32, McMillan. But look at that job that number 90, John Woodcock, did. He just stood up the blocker, closed it down. This is a very key situation for the Colts. If they don't score at this point, they can just throw it in almost because they will almost lose all confidence in their offense if they don't get the ball in the end zone here. Second and goal at the five. Jones will put it in the air. Got a man, and it is knocked away. Mike Williams punched it away just at the last minute. It looked like he was aiming for Roger Carr. He was trying to get the ball to Roger Carr, who was wide open alone in the back of the end zone. But what happened was that Ray Butler was coming across, and I think he thought the football was th being thrown to him. Look, you can see Carr right there wide open. No one around him. Now, Burt Jones is now 12 for 23, 175 yards. Chargers last week gave up 444 yards. Well, that tells you something about the adjustment San Diego made. And Bert Jones does not like what he sees on a third and goal situation. The Colts have converted only two of six today. And they need this one very, very badly, as you mentioned, Gene, if they want to stay on this ball game. 5.45 to play in the third period. San Diego leads Baltimore 30 to 7. Look, as the lights are on here at Memorial Stadium. Heavily overcast afternoon here in Baltimore. It has warmed up a bit. And the rain has continued to hold off. Earlier today, we heard there was a chance of thunder showers this afternoon. 
Well, you take a look at the third down conversion success this season. As I mentioned, the Colts 32 percent. They've allowed their opponents 51 percent. Third and goal. Baltimore. Very, very important. They get something on the board here, Gene. And you're exactly right. Just for, for the psychology of the entire football team, not only on offense but on defense. Those guys are sitting over there, and they want their offensive club to get some points on the board. McCauley in motion. He's the favorite receiver on third down. It is Butler, and it is knocked away. Pete Shaw, the third consecutive play Pete Shaw has been involved in, knocks it away from Mr. Butler. Well, now the Colts are faced with a real decision. Do you go for three or do you go for the six? Phil, I think they have to go for the touchdown at this point. I don't think uh, kicking the field goal is going to mean very much because everyone knows you can come out and kick a field goal from this point. But again, psychologically, they need a score. If they get a score here, their defense may come out and play inspired football like they did at the first part of the football game. And they have to have that from their defense. Ryan DeRue tried to check into the game. He said something to Burt Jones and came back out. Three wide receivers, Butler, Burke, and Carr. Fourth and goal. Pressure. Touchdown. Bill, if we take a look at this replay, you'll notice the difference this time is that Burt Jones' offensive line gives him time to throw the football. He's got plenty of time, now he runs up which creates a little more time, and he finds number 27, Curtis Dickey, who, by the way, is the leading receiver on this Colts ball club. Well, he certainly is. 26 catches for 307 yards coming into this game. And now you see Mike Wood add one more. So the Colts are on the board here with 5.35 to play in the third period. It is San Diego 30, Baltimore 14. And look at Mike McCormick. Bert Jones has to be a happy man, at least with that particular scoring strike. Last week, Curtis Dickey, Gene, caught 11 passes against Cincinnati. Well, they, they like him. They like to throw to him. He's got sure hands. He has excellent speed for a running back. And that's about all you can ask for. He is going to be a sensational running back here. Well, the key, Phil, is the speed that you mentioned before. And he is usually going to be covered by a linebacker. And there's no way that a linebacker can cover a guy who runs a 4-2-40. It's almost unheard of. A 4-2-40. It's incredible speed. Now Baltimore coming into today's game has averaged better than 17 and a half points a game. The problem has been, as we have said all day long, on the defensive side of the field, where they have given up 31 points an outing, and that is the worst in the National Football League. San Diego already has 30 today, and we still have 20 minutes and 35 seconds of football left. Mike Garrett is set to kick it away for the Baltimore Colts. Check that, it is Mike Wood. James Brooks is back deep to receive for San Diego. And Brooks will take it at the 11. Brooks with a good return outside the 25-yard line. He was third in the AFC coming in today on kickoff returns, averaging 26 yards every time he brings the ball out. By the way, we want to tell you fans in San Diego who are awaiting the Montreal-Los Angeles Dodger baseball game, there is a rain delay there, so you are not missing a thing. Sit back and enjoy this one for a while. 5.25 to play in the third quarter. Lone setback is James Brooks. Play action. Fouts will put it up to Mr. Brooks. And he picks up about six yards on the play before Joe Fetterspiel hammers him down. Fetterspiel just coming into Baltimore from New Orleans in a trade about a week ago. Well, that was a good call on the part of the Chargers. Bouts caught Baltimore in their zone defense. He dropped back. He allowed them plenty of time to get way back in their, in their drops, and they got that little screen out to number 21, James Brooks. Second down, four yards to go. As you take a good look at Dan Fouts, Chuck Muncie, the lone running back. Dan to Eric Seaver. He's got enough for the first down, and he dives ahead for a few more out across the 40-yard line. 
Fouts continues to get lots of time from that great offensive line. And as I mentioned before, he's got receivers all over the place as he comes to the right side to tight end number 85, Eric Severs, who, by the way, was the most valuable player at uh, Maryland right here at home. Well, as we mentioned in the first half, if the alignment looks a little bit strange for the Baltimore Colts, they are running a 3-4 defense now. They had not done that previous to today. Three down linemen, Thompson, Green, and Ozdowski. Fouts, 21 of 34, two touchdowns. First and 10, San Diego. Fouts is going for it. Ronnie Smith, and he will not get to it. Nesby Glasgow on the coverage. Gene Eureka, they are tearing up the town in Oakland. The Raiders are on the scoreboard for the first time in 12 quarters today. It is three to nothing. The Raiders over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Chris Barr with a 51-yard field goal. <laughs> well, you have to start someplace. You might as well start with a field goal. They could have started with a safety. You could have, they could have two started points. with a safety. Now, we did that game last week. Kansas City and Oakland, and I'll tell you, the Raiders have certainly been having their problems. We are not certain whether Mark Wilson has started today's game or Jim Plunkett. We will try and find that out for you. Second and ten, Charlie Joyner in motion to the top of your screen. The give is a Chuck Muncie. He'll try the right side. A flag goes down. It is certain to be holding, and it might be on Eric Seaver, the tight end. When the flag is thrown in that area, it's usually holding. Look at Seaver looking around. Did they catch me? Did they catch me? <laughs> a couple of other scores around the league. Cleveland has come back to take a lead over New Orleans on a Mike Pruitt one-yard touchdown run. 448 to play in that one. New Orleans has led that entire game. Minnesota continues to lead Philadelphia, but the Eagles are coming back. Two touchdown passes. Face mask, number 54, defense, automatic first down. Oh, let's, let's, let's take a look at the replay and see what happens. They got Sanders Shiver. He's guilty of a face mask. Oh, right at the bottom of the screen. You can see his hand on oh. Dylan Winslow's face mask. Oh. oh, oh, that should be a personal foul. That's dangerous. And I'll tell you, it's very dangerous. It is extremely dangerous. Bounce on first down to Muncie. Waits for his blockers to set it up. And Ozdowski tried to come in, and I look at him waving his right hand. He is hurting over there. I think he, too, got Muncie's face mask when he reached out to try and grab him. So it is second down. Pickup of about five yards on the play. Clock continues to run here in the third period. Thir three, three minutes and 15 seconds to play here. San Diego leads Baltimore 30-14 to 14 as you watch the Chargers break the huddle. Wide receivers to the top side. Wes Chandler. Kellen Winslow, the tight end, comes wide right. Muncie may get back to the line of scrimmage before big Bubba Green comes in and brings him down. Bubba's a rookie out of NC State. You know, Gene, earlier this week, Bubba was quoted as saying he's very, very bitter now about losing. He does not like to be a part of a losing ball club. He wants to turn things around in the worst way. Well, when you get in a situation like this where the team is losing a lot, you have to get some leadership from someplace. And on this team, they have some experienced veteran ball players. They're taking Chuck Muncie off. That's a shame. Yeah, we'll take a listen and see what it could possibly be, and we'll have word as to just what it is when we return in just a moment. From Baltimore, Maryland, as the San Diego medical staff works over Chuck Muncie on the far sideline, we will get a report as soon as it is available. It is third and five as the crowd here in Baltimore tries to cheer on their defensive unit. And Fouts will try and put it in the air. Batted down. Donnell Thompson bats it down, and San Diego will have to kick it away. Good part on the play of the young guy, number 99, Donnell Thompson. And Phil, you mentioned before, number 91, Bubba Green, was saying he didn't like losing. And I was about to say that you have to get the leadership from someplace. And if you're not going to get it from the veteran players, then those young guys have to come forward and say, look, we've lost enough. Let's turn things around. We have to do what's necessary to win. Quite frankly, we've done three Baltimore games this year, and I have yet to see a team leader emerge on this Baltimore Colt Club. George Rogers, and the ball is badly, and he still gets it away. A 
tremendous job by George Rogers under extreme pressure back there. You're exactly right. When he when that football hit the ground, he was looking for someone to come in and, and knock him down, and he eluded one guy, then he was able to get the football away. Terrific job on the part of George Roberts. A 44-yard kick. Say, don't forget, we followed boxer Johnny Bumpus through his days as an amateur in the National Golden Gloves and the Olympic Trials. Now as a young pro, he gets a title shot. He'll fight Willie Rodriguez for the USBA Junior Welterweight Crown, and you'll see it all on NBC Sports World on October 31st. First and 10, Baltimore, as Bertel put it in the air, and he's got a man. It is Ray Butler, and he's out across the 30-yard line. A first down for Baltimore. Ray Butler going against, going down against his own defense that San Diego was using. He found a little hole, and he pulled himself up, got the reception. Gene, you're going to love this. Another score out of Oakland. You said they could possibly get a safety and make it two to nothing. They've done just that. Todd Christensen, a block punt. It is now five to nothing, Oakland. <laughs> Dickey is split wide left like a wide receiver, but the ball is given to Randy McMillan, and he will go nowhere. It is Jim Webb in on the stop. Gain of possibly a yard on the play. Look at this one. St. Louis being annihilated by Atlanta in the fourth quarter, 41 to 20. Kansas City leads Denver 7 to nothing in the first quarter. And Oakland, as we just told you, leads Tampa Bay 5 to nothing. I'll tell you, if Kansas City beats the Denver Broncos, that sends the American Conference West up for grabs with San Diego, Kansas City, and Denver all tied for the lead. Dickey in motion. On second and nine, Burt Jones for Dickey. Dickey had it, and Ray Preston pushed it out of his hands, and we've got a flag down. Burt Jones is really upset. Oh. I think it's going to be holding. There it is. There's the indication. Holding against Baltimore. So we take a look at the tail end of this replay. Dickey has his man beat, but the ball isn't thrown far enough. And 52, Ray Preston wisely sticks his hand up and gets it in there just in time to knock it away. Now, if that appeared to be face guarding or screening, it is not. There has been a change this year. Let's listen. Holding, number 68, offense, second down. That's Jeff Hart. This is a very, very interesting rule change this year gene on blocking or screening it is not blocking or screening in 1981 now unless the defensive back waves his hand if he simply puts it up in front of the receiver it is not blocking he has to wave those hands second and 19 for baltimore mcmillan Picked up of about five yards on the play. It'll be third and about 14 as the clock continues to wind down. 29 seconds to play here in the third period. <laughs> Phil, the early indication is that Chuck Muncie has a sprained knee, but he may be back in the ball game. Another final for you. Minnesota has hung on to defeat the Philadelphia Eagles 35 to 23. There are no more undefeated teams in the National Football League. Third down, 13 yards to go. Burt Jones needs the first down. And it is almost picked off. Woody Lowe was there, and if he would have picked it off, it would have been his second interception of the day. As the third quarter comes to an end, the score, San Diego 30, Baltimore 14. We'll be right back after these messages from your local state. Folks on the West Coast again, the Montreal-Los Angeles Dodger game, a rain delay in Montreal, so you are missing nothing. When we are done here, we will switch to that game. So stay right where you are. As Mike Garrett prepares to kick it away for Baltimore, an end-over-end -end kick. James Brooks will have a return. If it bounces towards him, it does not. And Mike James Brooks has the ball. A good decoy is not James Brooks. One of the Chargers picked it up. We'll get a number for you. And we're blocked out from up here also. Somebody picked it up. 
I thought they whistled it dead, Gene, out on the 40-yard line when two of the Colts jumped up and batted it. Well, that's what I thought, too. There's a flag down on the play. The officials are huddled there trying to decide what the outcome's going to be. Now they'll discuss it. And now we'll see the indication. You cannot bat the ball towards your own goal line. That is the rule. Well, I believe, if memory serves me correctly, the Chargers have the option of taking the ball where it is or they kick it again. Now the storm that we were expecting here in Baltimore has not materialized, but the thunder is here in the form of the San Diego Chargers. Now look at Mike McCormick. He is, he is upset. He doesn't know what's going on either. Now Fouts is talking with one of the officials. I don't think anybody knows what's going on. Well, I, they're talking to Dan Fouts, and I think they're trying to... Against the kicking team, penalty six line, first down. They were, they were explaining the options that were open to the Chargers. I'll take a look at it again. This happened last week against the San Diego Chargers on an onside kick. As you can see, the two Colts go up and bat the ball. They're trying to keep the ball from going back in their direction, so they just bat it forward. So it is first down for San Diego at their own 40-yard line. Frank Duncan was the charger who picked that ball up and ran it out of bounds. 14.45 to play in this ball game. Muncie is back in the ball game with a sprained knee at all. And he runs it straight up the right side, pick up of three yards on the play before Ed Smith closes it down. Another final for you today. Atlanta has blown out the St. Louis Cardinals 41 to 20. Listen to this. Steve Bartkowski, four touchdown passes, two to Alfred Jenkins, one to William Andrews. Make that two to William Andrews. Oakland now stuffing it out over Tampa. They have scored a touchdown. Touchdown Raiders. First one in a long time. Second and six. Fouts over the middle. Kellen Winslow cannot hold on. Ball thrown behind Kellen. We take a look at this from the end zone. Dan Fouts doesn't throw many bad passes, but he gets this one a little behind his tight end. Winslow, as you can see on that excellent shot from the end zone. And when that happens to you as a receiver and you're going across that middle, once that ball is past you, now you start looking for those defenders because you can get one in the chops. Now Fouts 22 of 37 for 253 yards. West Chandler wide left. Kellen and Charlie Joyner in the slot. Look at this formation. Joyner. And he is brought down by Derek Hatchett, but not before he moves into Baltimore territory and a San Diego first down. I have never seen a wide receiver go in as many directions as Charlie Joyner did on that play. He went to the outside, he came back, went to the inside first, came back outside, reversed his field, and went back to the inside. It's incredible. There's the score. Cleveland over New Orleans. That's a final now, 20 to 17. That's one of those plays, Gene, that you draw on the, on the <laughs> That's sand right. and sandlot football. So you go to the blue car, turn left, and I'll hit you as you get on the <laughs> Fitz Street bus. <laughs> First and 10. Ball at the 45. Bounce for Joyner. What a catch, and he drops the football. A flag goes down there, ruling it an incompleted forward pass. Well, the fans don't agree, but I think it's an excellent call because Joyner went up and got the football, but he never had complete control. Well, the early indication is that it's the illegal procedure against the Chargers. We take a look at this replay. Fouts gets an excellent pass in there, throws it right in front of the man. He has the football, but he doesn't have control. You can see the football comes right down his waist and goes right Six down below. Six men on the line against the offense. First down. Well, they need one more guy on the line. Got to have seven up there, guys. It is first and 15 now for San Diego. The ball moves out to the midfield stripe as Charlie Joyner comes wide left. West Chandler wide right. 
the running backs, Muncie and John Capaletti. 13 minutes, 14 seconds to play. Muncie tries the right side. And he picks up about three yards before Bruce Laird brings him down, the 10th year man out of American International University. Laird really shot up in there and made a great tackle. That's something that the Colts have not done very well. Head coach Mike McCormick has really chastised his players for not tackling well. Al McCormick said before this ball game, in fact, it was almost a direct quote. He says, I hope this team's embarrassed and tired of all the criticism and the losing. And willing to fight. They need some fight. Second and 12. Fouts steps up into the pocket. Got Joyner. He's got the football and the first down at the Baltimore 31-yard line. Joe Fetterspiel finally moves back to make the stop. Great piece of work by Charlie Joyner. Not only by Charlie Joyner, but by Dan Fouts. He has an uncanny ability to know where all of his receivers are. He just seems to know where everybody is on the field at all times. I thought he was going to throw the ball on a little pitch out to Chuck Muncie, but he goes downfield to number 18, Charlie Joyner, who just continues to dumbfound people. I think he's about 33 years old, and he runs around out there like he's about 18. Just turned 34 four days ago. Happy birthday to Charlie Joyner. West Chandler in motion. Pitch out near side. It is Muncie. What a run by Chuck Muncie. He broke right through Ed Smith. Kim Anderson finally jumps on him. Not before he reaches the Baltimore 15-yard line. And look at this guy, Motor. And he got a good look at that cast that he has on his left hand. A guy as big as Chuck Muncie is usually doesn't have that kind of acceleration. But once he saw the opening, as we can see from this replay, the guards are pulling out. There's the, also the tackle, Billy Shields, number 66. Once Muncie sees that open, he just shoots through there, just like a shot out of a cannon. And it's really unusual for a guy of his size to have that kind of acceleration. John Capaletti with an outstanding block, too, on Bruce Laird there to spring Muncie. First and 10, San Diego. Little counter to Capaletti. Still on his feet near the 12-yard line. Or he's finally brought down. It is getting dark here in Baltimore. Kim Anderson brings him down. Number 25, John Capaletti running through the middle. Looks like he did at Penn State when he just goes one way, goes the other way. Shows tremendous agility. Hits up in there really tough. We'll take a look at the heavy overcast here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland, where we have 10 minutes, 35 seconds to play. San Diego leads this one 30 to 14 and wanting some more. Bounce over the middle. Kellen Winslow. Watch this block by Seaver. And he will not get in. Winslow is down, and his helmet comes off. What a block by Eric Seaver, the other tight end. Well, San Diego continues to confuse the opposition as they have their running back, Chuck Muncie. He goes up through the middle. He clears out the linebackers. Winslow waits for them to drop back. He comes underneath, and look at this block he gets from number 85, Eric Seavers. Good block with Sanders Shivers. He fights it off, and he comes up, and he saves the touchdown. It is first and goal, San Diego. Three tight ends check in. All of the wide receivers sit down. Muncie and Capaletti, the running backs. Capaletti. Do you believe it? Capaletti tried the left side. They slammed the door. He just backed up and strolled around the right end. That's exactly right. He just strolled around the right end because there was absolutely no one there, as you'll see on this replay. He hits up actually to the left side. The Colts shut it down, and he just looks to the outside. There's nobody there, and he just coasts in for the touchdown. Well, San Diego makes it a 36-14 game, and Rolf Bonerska will come on and try and make it one more. Now, this is a game the Baltimore Colts really wanted to win today. It hits the upright and comes back out. It is no good. That is Rolf's first miss in 1981. However, right now, it doesn't seem to matter because San Diego still has a 36-14 lead and will be back. Washington, we want to remind you once more, it is still raining at Olympic Stadium in Montreal where the Expos are trying to take on the Los Angeles Dodgers. That game is being held up. We will bring that game to you as soon as we are done here. 
Zachary Dixon at the three. Flag goes down. And he is outside the 20-yard line. A flag goes down. I mean, the ball pops loose. And it is out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Kevin Williams, number 21, return the ball, not Zachary Dixon. I think it's going to be offsides against the Chargers. At least it's thrown back up in that area. It is offsides. I got to believe Baltimore will take the football where it is at the 37-yard line. Number 84 on the kicking team. Penalties decline. First down. Now Ronnie Smith whistled for offside. Now the Colts will take it right there. And why not? Probably the best field position they've had all day. Ten minutes, six seconds to play in this one. Roger Carr comes wide right. Ray Butler wide left. The running backs, Curtis Dickey and Randy McMillan. To Dickey, and it hits him right in the shoulder pad. But the ball was thrown behind him. It was a, certainly a catchable pass. He had to go back for it. Well, you're right. He did have to reach back. But oftentimes, when you reach back for a football that's thrown as hard as Burt Jones throws it, it's difficult to catch. If Burt had taken a little off that football, then Dickey may have been able to hold on to it. Burt Jones, 15 of 29 for 197 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. The Chargers with five defensive backs. And Jones is under pressure and goes down. Leroy Jones was there. And the rookie out of Ohio State, Keith Ferguson, was there. Boy, I'm telling you, they were really there. It looks as though they just shot through there and no one touched them. There you can see number 68, Leroy Jones. He beats his man. He's, Jeff Hart is trying to block him. And number 62, Ken Huff, is trying to help out to no avail as they get through. Throw Burt Jones for a loss. Now there you saw that graphic. It is the fourth sack for the San Diego Chargers, totaling 42 yards. Everything the Colts are trying is backfiring. Third and a bundle, and Jones got to go for it all. To Dickey, and it is almost picked off by Willie Buchanan. Another punting situation for Baltimore and San Diego will again have great field position. As you look at Burt Jones, a very disconsolate Mr. Jones. Last time he faced the San Diego Chargers back in 1976, he beat them in San Diego, 37-21. This is the first time the Chargers have played here at Memorial Stadium since 1972. Mike Garrett, five punts today. James Brooks, a deep man for San Diego. End over end kick. Brooks will have a return. And he just goes down rather than get leveled there. So San Diego, as I mentioned, great field position at their own 43 and we'll be back in just a moment. We're back with you as you take a look at the timepiece. Nine minutes, 10 seconds to play in this ball game. It has been all San Diego 36 to 14 over the Baltimore Colts. As you take a look at Dan Fouts. Chargers with the football at their own 43 yard line. San Diego trying to go to five and two on the year. Pitch right side, Brooks. Flag goes down. And Ozdowski brings Mr. Brooks down. You take a look at the standings around the uh, AFC West. If San Diego wins today, they will be five and two. Denver is losing to Kansas City. If the Broncos would lose and Kansas City would hold on and win, we would have a three-way horse race for the lead in the AFC West. Oakland is winning. They would go to three and four. San Diego plays at Chicago next Sunday. And that should be a good one. Let's take a listen. Offense lined up in the neutral zone. First down. All right, back up the Chargers. Another five. It'll be first and 15. 
The ball now at the 38-yard line as the yard lines are now totally obliterated there in the dirt around second base here at Memorial Stadium. Eric Seaver, the tight end, in motion. Flags fly. James Rook, swing pass. And he picks up about five yards on the play. We were talking in the first half, Gene, about this dirt infield, and we were told at halftime that they will sod it tomorrow. Offside again against the Chargers, and now Fouts trots over to find out what's going on here. Who's doing what? Well, evidently, there was total agreement because there must have been three or four flags all thrown at the same time. What may have happened is that one of the men in motion may have turned up before the ball was actually snapped. Let's take a listen here. Encroachment, number 18, offense, lined up into the neutral zone. Now Charlie Joyner is the guilty party. So now it is first and 20. Joyner goes wide to the right. At the top of your screen, it is West Chandler. Wide left, the running backs for San Diego, Brooks and Capaletti. And Fouts will put it in the air. Got a man, it is Joyner, and he overthrows him. Charlie had everybody beat back there, and he simply overthrew him. Well, Fouts had plenty of time to throw the football. As we take a look at Joyner, we have him isolated. The Colts go into a zone defense. They roll the corner up to take the short area away. Joyner just comes into the middle. Now, the linebackers are supposed to be there, but the Colts don't have anyone there. And had Fouts thrown that ball maybe a half yard, a little shorter, it would have been a completion. Fouts 26 of 43 now for 291 yards. Coming into today's game, Fouts had thrown... 22 300 yard games. He's third on the all time list. Second and 20. Draw play. Brooks running room right side. And Brooks takes on Nesby Glasgow head on, knocks him down and runs for another five. What an, what an excellent call and an excellent run on the part of number 21, James Brooks. You can see he bounces to the outside. He gets a good block for number 85, Eric Sievers. And as you mentioned before, he takes on Glasgow, and he gets the best of that deal. He is strong. A lot of strength for a guy who's only 5'9". Now James Brooks has done it all year long for these San Diego Chargers. 5'9", 180 pounds. Averages 4.5 yards every time he carries the ball. Third and four, San Diego. Kellen Winslow in motion. Here's Mr. Brooks again. This time he will get nowhere. Reggie Pinckney shooting the gap perfectly, and San Diego will have to punt the football. Reggie Pinckney, the fifth back in that nickel situation, he shoots the gap, comes up and makes the stop. The clock continues to run. Eight minutes, 23, 22, 21, as George Roberts comes on to boot it away for the Chargers. Back deep to receive for the Colts, Dave Shula. The son of... Miami Dolphins head coach Don Shula. He'll be snapping the ball off that dirt. It was a good snap. Almost punt, almost blocked. A good kick, and Shula's going to let it roll into the end zone. And it does so. And we've got a flag down as Bauer is going at it with somebody out there about the 42-yard line. It is Randy Van Diver. Flag is down. We'll see what the call is out here at the 42. A 54-yard kick by Roberts. And we'll see what the call is going to be. It is going to be against Number 79, Baltimore. blue, blocking below the waist. Post-possession foul. Now there you see Mr. Van Diver. So they'll mark it off from the 20-yard line. Baltimore pinned deep in their own territory. Blocking below the way, 79 receiving team. On the touchback, the ball is returned to the 10-yard line. First down. A 10-yard penalty. They would have had the ball at the 20. They will now have it from the 10. Seven minutes, 48 seconds to play in this one. San Diego leads it 36. Take a look. Listen to this. In case you can't tell what they were spelling out, the fans 
here in Baltimore are spelling Orioles. <laughs> I suppose it's safe to say, Gene, that the folks here have perhaps seen enough of the Colts. Well, they still love football, and many of them are still here. They haven't gone home yet. No, they have not. First and ten, Baltimore. Pattern near side. It is intended for Reese McCall, and I think he got it. Yes, he did. Pick up of almost ten yards. It'll be second and about a half a yard. Ray Preston on the stop. Preston is trying to convince the officials that he didn't have it. He caught the football, and he actually dropped it, but he... He held on to it with both of his knees, so the ball never hit the ground. I love that quote by Kenny King of the Oakland Raiders earlier this year. He asked Kenny King if they thought Stickham, Banning Stickham, was going to hurt pro football. He says, well, you'll still see outstanding catches, but the receivers won't be making them with their elbows anymore. <laughs> Second and six inches. Burt Jones steps up into the pocket, fumbles the football. And Wyatt Henderson has recovered for the Chargers. Now that's one of those breaks, Gene, you just, you can't help. When it rains, it pours. When things are going wrong, it seems like everything goes wrong. The Chargers from the 30 to give to James Brooks. Left side, running room. He was trying to get by West Chandler, and he could not get by him. Bruce Laird combines with Larry Brazil to bring him down. Pick up of about 11 yards. And a first down for San Diego as the clock continues to run. 6.35, 6.34 to play. Well, I would imagine that San Diego is going to keep the ball on the ground, try to let that clock run down. And you have to ask yourself in this situation, why wouldn't they bring in their other quarterback? They have a resounding lead. Well, that's a good question. James Brooks across the right side. And he picks up another three yards. Well, Don Coriel has not used Ed Luther a great deal here in 1981. He's using to, to go with Dan Fouts, and you have to wonder, Gene, why that is when you've got a commanding lead. Why risk perhaps somebody coming in and uh, punching Dan's lights out? Well, it's uh, usually in this situation that there probably would have been a substitution, but I'm sure that Don Coriel has a good reason. You certainly can't fault him. He has a record to, to back up anything he does. Brooks on second and eight, bangs into the right side and goes close to the first down. Ed Smith is there to bring him down. It is still raining in Montreal where the Expos are trying to get underway against the Los Angeles Dodgers in game five of the National League playoff series. A game has been delayed. It has not even begun. So you folks on the West Coast are missing absolutely nothing. Bill, let's give some more credit to this offensive line of the Chargers. Billy Shields, number 66, Doug Wilkerson, Ed White, Russ Washington, and uh, Mesa at center. They have just done an outstanding job all day long. They deserve a lot of credit. Oh, they certainly do. Third and three. Brooks cuts it back up the middle. Inside the five. First and goal, San Diego. It is Nesby Glasgow, the last man in line who could have stopped them, did so. Well, the Colts, as you can see on this replay, basically the Colts are just going through the motions. But number 21, James Brooks, he wants a touchdown. He's not going through the motions. He's trying to get into that end zone. Well, there was talk earlier this week about Mike McCormick being on very, very shaky grounds as you look at Mike McCormick there. And you've got to wonder what this loss, a big lopsided loss to the Chargers, will do to his job stability. That is Hank Bauer in motion. James Brooks will try the right side, and he will be tackled for a loss. It is Bruce Laird coming up from his strong safety spot. And i got to wonder if having Bauer in there, he hardly ever plays, and then putting him in motion just doesn't telegraph where you're going with that kind of a play. <laughs> well, you want to have him out front on the blocking situation, and I guess you might as well let the other people know because it's not going to make much difference if he does his job. But in that situation, Bruce Laird, and we've talked about Bruce often today, number 40, the strong safety for the Colts, he's a guy that's not going through the motions. He's a veteran ball player, and he's been in a winning situation, and he came up really playing tough today and made the stop. Second and goal, the ball now at the seven. Fouts will put it in the air. Clarence Williams. 
second. Well, they make it look easy, don't they? Clarence Williams celebrates in the end zone. He got a great block from number 25, John Capaletti. That is CW, and let's look at it again. He was wide open on the little swing, Gene. Well, Dan gets the ball out to the right side. See it on our screen, but he gets a great block. There it is. John Capaletti comes back and blindsides the man down low. Doesn't see him at all. Williams goes in, standing up, untouched. Now Rolf Vanerska will try and make it 43 to 14. And he's perfect. So the blowout continues here in Baltimore with 320 notify stations along our network that the Montreal Los Angeles Dodger game is being held up. You will go to local programming and monitor NBC for word on what is transpiring in Montreal. So stations along the line, local programming, please, until you hear further word from NBC. But right now, we still have three minutes and 23 seconds of football remaining here in Baltimore as Rolf Vanerska is set to kick it away. It is Kim Anderson. And he's out across the 30-yard line before he has wrestled out of bounds there. Oh, Baltimore will have the football at about the 31-yard line. I want to emphasize what we just said a moment ago, notifying stations along the line that we would like you to go to local programming because the Montreal-Los Angeles Dodger game has not started yet. Rain delay in Montreal. And please monitor the NBC television network and we will keep you advised as to what is happening in Montreal. First and 10, Baltimore, Burt Jones. Got a man. It is Randy McMillan, the rookie out of Pittsburgh. And he's out across the 35-yard line. Ray Preston and Jim Laslovic bring him down. We're inside the three-minute mark. Well, the Chargers made some changes today in their defense. As we mentioned before, Willie Buchanan goes from the corner spot into strong safety, and it seems they've been effective. What they're going to do from now on, though, Phil, is they're going to drop back, and they're going to try to make everything happen underneath. They'll allow the receiver to catch the ball if he's underneath, and they're going to come up to make the sure tackle and make sure that if Baltimore does score, they're going to have to eat up some time on that clock to do it. Second and four. Got a man. The tight end, Reese McCall. And he's brought down by Ray Preston. But the Colts are into San Diego territory. Jim Laslovic also there. And there you look at Mike McCormick. He wants his ball club to get on the scoreboard. You take a look at Reese McCall, number 86. Fourth-year man out of Auburn. And a 65-yard touchdown catch last week against Cincinnati. Jones. McMillan again out of the backfield. And he's inside the 30-yard line of San Diego. Ray Preston is there again. They have been some amazing last-minute finishes in the history of pro football. Now we're going to show you one of those fantastic finishes because we are at the two-minute mark here in Baltimore. Alcoa presents fantastic finish. Phil, as we take a look at the total offense, the statistics certainly bear out what's happening on the score. The Chargers, 466 total yards. What an afternoon they have had through the air, particularly. Dan Fouts hadn't reached 300 yards yet, but he's been right on the money with those passes. Second and two. Burt Jones has got a man. Again, it is Randy McMillan. They've run that pass three times, and he's got room. A first down at the Charger 20-yard line. Pete Shaw and Alan Ellis combine on the stop. A minute 38 to play. The clock is running here in Baltimore. We take a look at this replay. The ball gets to Randy McMillan. What the Colts are doing right now is they're playing strictly for their pride. There's no way they're going to win this football game. But the fans, the press, everybody's been on them, and they're, they're playing for pride right now. And this guy has as much pride and ability as anyone, number seven, Burt Jones. And you have to feel sorry for him a little bit to continue to have the abuse that he takes here in Baltimore. Now, there was a lot of pushing and shoving in the Charger defensive secondary. Curtis Dickey and Ray Preston were really going at it as the ball passed right over Dickey's helmet. And Burt Jones is going to have none of it. 
Well, obviously, there's tremendous frustration on the part of the entire Colt organization. As we take a look at this replay, Burt Jones throws the ball down there, and you can see that, that uh, Dickey is being pushed. Ray Preston is all over him before the ball gets there, and that should be a penalty. I think you're right. Minute 15 to play. The clock is stopped. Roger Carr, wide left, Ray Butler to the bottom of your screen. On second and ten. Jones steps up. He's got Reese McCall, and he cannot hold on. McCall is hammered by Allen Ellis right at the two-yard line. The ball was thrown a little bit high. Reese McCall made a good effort to get open. Burt Jones takes off. Then he sees that Reese has made a move to get open. He throws the ball a little high. McCall goes up, and he gets his hands on it. And I think he should have come down with it. But I'll he tell had you, to jump a little bit, but he had both hands on that He ball. should have caught it. It is now third and ten, and you just can't say enough about this San Diego Charger defensive secondary today. A secondary that has been giving up on the average 306 yards a game, dead last in the NFL. They have played exceedingly well today. Burt Jones going to get hammered. Again, the 6'5 rookie out of Ohio State, Keith Ferguson, is there to bring him down. For San Diego, that's the fifth time they have brought Burt Jones down. Well, any time that you get a sack, when the defensive group gets a sack, that's because those defensive backs have the guys covered. So the defensive line should give credit to San Diego's defensive backs for covering the guys, which allows them time to get in there and get the sack. 54 seconds to play again. We want to remind our local stations along the line. It is raining in Montreal. Please provide local programming and monitor the NBC television network for further updates. 40 seconds, 39 seconds. Fourth down and eight. Jones will go down. And you can just see the frustration on the faces of the offensive linemen for the Baltimore Colts. Leroy Jones is the man this time, and Burt Jones comes off the football field, and I'll tell you something. These Colts are a disappointed group of young men. 34 seconds to play. The Chargers have the ball, and William Ed Luther has come on. Dan leaving with 298 yards passing, just two yards shy of what would have been his 23rd 300-yard game. He's third on the all-time list behind a fellow that people here in Baltimore know a lot about, a guy by the name of John Unitas. He had 26 300-yard games. Sonny Jurgensen had 25 in his career. And as you look on at number 14, 26 of 43, 298, and three touchdowns. Not bad for an afternoon, Dan. There's Mr. Luther, the second-year man out of San Jose State. And can he rifle the football? Hank Bauer across the left side. Pickup of about three. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KCST-TV, San Diego. And I believe that's going to be the last play of this ball game. And it is, as you take a look at the wide shot here at Memorial Stadium, and virtually nobody has left. Mike McCormick saying hello to Billy Brooks. And the Blue Birds continue to express their feelings about the caliber of football they have seen here this afternoon. So, the San Diego Chargers totally dominate the Baltimore Colts to the tune of 43-14. to 14. We'll be back. <laughs> 